What's up guys, this is Steven Malin, music composer for The Screen, helping you build a music business that supports your family. Today in this episode of Composer Chat, we're chatting with composer and producer Travis Vingroff. Now, Travis and I have worked together for many years. He's one of my top clients, and I write a lot of custom music for his fiction audio dramas. And we're gonna talk in this chat a little bit about our history together, but most importantly today, we're gonna to be talking about Patreon and how it has become a, an absolutely important part of his business as a project creator. And now he has rallied around hundreds of patrons that support him every single month that allow him to create his projects. Now, as a music composer, this is one of the many ways that you can earn income every single month that is recurring, that is reliable. And so I'm excited to jump into this chat with Travis. We're going to discuss some strategies that you can use to help make Patreon a very viable income source for you as well. If you'd like to have your own composer chat just like this, go to stephenmalin.com slash composer chat. You'll get more information about that. Hope you enjoyed this chat. Hope it's super valuable for you. Let's jump inside. Well, thank you so much, Travis. I'm really excited to talk with you today. Um, just to give a little bit of history of, of our relationship, man, we've we met, I think it had to be five or six years ago through Kickstarter of all things. And yes. I you just never never know when you're gonna meet people and what kind of relationships you're gonna form. But we actually met because we were both doing video game cover music. We both had albums. I was doing a piano album and you play accordion. And at that time you had this really cool album and I just remember us kind of geeking out and nerding out about how interesting it was we were both doing this. And you know, we kind of formed a friendship from there. And little did I know that you were also a songwriter, a composer, and a project creator. And we just kind of formed this interesting, um, just what started off as a friendship, but then eventually turned into a business relationship. And since then, we've done dozens of projects together, just kind of uh, spanning a, a ton of different fields. And it's been, a, it's been an absolute blast working with you on all these different things. And I never know, you know I, don't, I don't think you know either, all the crazy <laughs> new things we're gonna work on down the line. And what I wanted to do today is just kind of really piggyback on the the topic of Patreon, because as a project creator and a composer, someone who works in sound, um, Travis, you are someone that, you're one of the very few people that I know that actually outwork me. Because <laughs> um, that's something that I pride myself in is that I'm always working on a ton of new projects and this kind of stuff. But every time I talk to you, you have triple the amount or quadruple the amount. And it's just such an honor to, to work with you. And Likewise. I feel like you have a unique perspective that you can offer my audience who are mostly music composers who are kind of in the, the first couple years, or maybe they've been doing it for five years, and they're just looking for more income opportunities. And I believe that you have a very successful Patreon, and you have a unique perspective that I would just love to tap into today. Um, and this might be a shorter uh, talk today, but I hope that there's just some little valuable nuggets we can get out of this. So I want to jump right to the meat of the conversation. If you don't mind, I'd love to hear sure. why did you jump into Patreon and specifically what is kind of your strategy for a successful Patreon? Sure. Uh, so I've got a, a different approach than many. Um, I come from the podcasting world. So we create audio fiction for free. We're literally giving free content away every two weeks. Uh, so there's very minimal ways of monetizing that. So you look at uh, merchandising, merchandising, I, I'm going to say it's crap. Um, in, in the, the podcasting field, it's, it really is. You're either working as a retailer and you're selling like a thing for, let's say five bucks, uh, profit or 10 bucks profit on a, on a great day, uh, assuming you're not doing international shipping, uh, or you are working through some other company like T public and they're selling your stuff. Uh, you, you really can't make a living off of that at, even the level I'm at, which is I've got over 5 million downloads, you know, we've got 40,000 or 50,000 regular listeners, depending on the show. But the most we're really seeing on that is like $100 a month, which you can't live off of on a free release show. So you need content. 
So okay, um, selling stuff isn't really a great option, um, and you can you can sell a lot of stuff if you go to a convention, but that's your whole weekend. You're going to an event and you're selling stuff by hand, and that's a huge pain. So other uh, areas of revenue, you can work for somebody, you can get a job in the industry and jobs pay you a salary and that's kind of cool but that's not really where i see myself as a creative type i'd rather be making my own stuff so what other options do we have well there's a thing called patreon which allows you to uh, i don't want to say leverage in a bad way but you can work with your audience to build a brand that they're happy with that you can put your integrity into and that you don't have to take on sponsors sponsorship is another great route it's just not one that we've uh, invested heavily into as a as a two person company brand. Um, so, Patreon allows us to be creative, to create more things that our audience want, to do all those things without having to sell out or find new ways to monetize. And we have found the most effective ways of getting people on our Patreon is to offer added content, added value. And what is value? We're entertainers, we're not educators. So I'm not offering education on our Patreon. I'm offering, hey, we've got an extra like couple hours of things to keep you entertained. We're constantly posting updates and we're uh, behind the scenes things. We're giving you access to the music of our shows. You can put it into your, whatever you listen to and, and enjoy it and stream it however you'd like. Uh, so it's, it's really about adding value for your audience, whatever value you create in a way that incentivizes them at a tiered level um, to basically get them on board and keep what you're doing going. I ramble a bit, but was that helpful? No, that's good. <laughs> uh, that's extremely helpful. So what, what advice would you give a young music composer looking to set up their own Patreon? Because I know that you and I have had a ton of discussions about different models that you can jump after because some people like to do multiple tiers. I know that you're, you're someone that does that as well, where there might be a $1 pledge, there might be a $5, a $10, and then sometimes more expensive than that. Have you seen more success with the multiple tiers or do you think people would be better off doing the single tier or what? What kind of advice do you have? It really depends what type of composer you are. Uh, if you are a, let's say you're also on the musician side or you're, you're releasing a finished composition that sounds cool, like you're in a band, right? Or you're composing for soundtracks that maybe haven't been commissioned, but they're just soundtracks that you have ideas for. And you're kind of like, oh, this could be an idea and get me future work by showing what I can do. Uh, you can monetize that music in the way of like, hey, you can get access to all the stuff that I'm making on a regular basis and I'm making multiple songs. Let's say you're a composer and you're really behind the scenes oriented. You could offer like these really cool behind the scenes videos that maybe people have value at a five or $10 level. And you can also tier it out. So people who are interested in certain parts of your content um, get more of it at a higher level. And you can also experiment and change things. It's not this one model and then it's suddenly static. There are people out there. Uh, Sean Howard is a gentleman who has a Patreon series that he's been writing up on medium.com, like all the different things that have failed and all the different things that have worked on how to build a Patreon. And it's a really great series kind of exploring what worked for uh, him and his team. As far as uh, musicians, I would say your content is probably your, your number one thing that you're offering a value, you're trying to get listeners. And then you've got listeners, you're converting them to like longtime listeners or fans. So I would probably gear it more toward either the the insight, they're getting access to you, a person, they're getting access to how you think and kind of your, your process there, or they're getting access to your music. And those are the three things that I think are of value. Like outtakes for, you know, fiction podcasts, no one cares about that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We'll tweet you a thank you, People care on some level, but it's not really why they're there. They're there to support you. So if they're there for access to you or the other things. So how does that differ from your free content, such as a YouTube channel or a podcast that is completely free and people can comment on there or a Facebook group? What makes a Patreon different? You can offer uh, exclusive stuff. And that's really the, the secret sauce for us. Um, we had seen a lot of people leave after we were seasonal. So we've got like one show, then we switch to the next show, then we switch to the next seasonally in like 10 episodes, uh, every whatever, um, trying to keep it really quick here. Uh, but our, our secret to keeping people has been offering catered content for each show. So year round, you're getting content for our heavy hitters, even if it's not like a primary show, it's, it's bonus stories for our stuff. So it's, it's bonus YouTube content, bonus podcast content, uh, in the same vein of what people already like. It's more of what they like. And I would say that a third of my job in a day is to work on making sure that we have content for our Patreon. 
And I, I work many hours in a given week, uh, but I really want to keep those people happy because that's my career. They're, my job full time is to entertain specifically that 800 people. I have 40,000 listeners, but 800 of them support me hmm. and yeah. give me a job. <laughs> that's true. And I know that speaking of that, um, you've told me about a really useful tool that I might start using with my own Patreon uh, subscribers or even just my email subscribers or YouTube subscribers that I think is super valuable. It's called Bonjoro. Can you tell us a little um, bit about how that works and how you are doing something very creative to be um, very intimate and very personal with 800 people? So uh, you can you can certainly email people and that's a thing you can comment to them. You can call them out in shout outs, tweets, whatever, social media is. But Bonjoro is pretty unique. Uh, it is a an app you put on your phone and you basically, uh, whenever you can set it up to triggers, and the triggers can get more complicated the more you invest in paying monthly. The free version allows you up to 50 videos a month. And basically, you're making a video for the person who just subscribed to your Patreon or for the person who just signed up for your list as a subscriber to your YouTube channel. And you're sending them a customized video just for them. And that's very special. Uh, you can have an intimate like conversation with them. You can say some stuff that maybe is unique to them. Maybe you've done a little bit of research and you know who they are. You talk to them a bit about on Twitter or you see that they like uh, a certain brand or a certain type of music uh, or have an experience like their picture's a dog and mm -hmm. you happen to really like dogs. So you can have these really cool one-on-one -on -one conversations with people that you wouldn't otherwise get to have. Uh, it's normally a, you know, an anonymous internet sort of thing. You get a username, but you can convert that into actually making a friend to some degree. And, and some of these people have become friends <laughs> over the years and that's kind of cool but you're allowing yourself access to your audience in a very intimate way. And it's one of my favorite tools because it's so easy. You don't have to save anything. You don't have to send anything. You literally just get an app, a notification on your phone pops up, make a quick video, send it out with a personalized message. So they know it's not spam and it's actually for them and it's there. Yeah. Uh, and I'm excited to explore that tool more. And what about discord? Because I know that I have a discord server and I have a specific uh, section of my discord channel where there's a few little sections there within the Screen Music Academy that my Patreons get access to. And inside there, you know, in my world, um, I only have one tier. I have a $20 tier and I don't have a $1, $5. It's just the $20. And so for that reason, it's a very select few people. But because of that, I, I felt the need to make it a higher amount. That way I can serve them more and I can have more of a one-on-one -on -one interaction with them because in that channel, we're doing personalized feedback of the music and we're having you know, Q and A's and one-on-one -on -one chats um, and kind of helping to schedule out my YouTube channel. So that's that's kind of the unique lane that I've taken with my Patreon. But I wanted to hear from your experience, whether it's from you personally or other Patreon creators you know, how effective is a Discord server? Because there is an attachment feature that you can integrate it. As soon as someone um, joins your Patreon, they will be added to a certain role within your discord server so what's your experience with that uh first i would just like to comment that one tier is a really awesome method for many people and i just wanted to validate that uh, you you said it but uh, other creators do that and it's a really cool you're you're in the, you're in club Stephen malin i mean that's that's where you hmm. are and i think that's awesome uh, and to answer your question uh discord servers can be extremely useful uh, i am under utilizing them because uh as a two-person team, uh, one of us really doesn't do well on social media. It digs at their mental health uh, and, and bandwidth. And then myself, I'm working far too often to be too much on too many social medias, so it doesn't work for us personally. But we know many other communities, such as The End of Time and Other Bothers, Sean Howard, who I mentioned earlier, Girl in Space, Sarah Ray Werner, um, Mars Fall. There are uh, a number of podcasts out there who are fairly successful and actually really successful, who use uh, Discord servers. And, and again, it's that accessibility, that interactivity, because Patreon itself does a really bad job of allowing you to interact with your audience. You have to get creative. So Discord is a great way to take control back and start that conversation with your fans without having to start a community elsewhere, i.e. Facebook groups. And those are really hard to moderate and you know, specifically Patreon only. So Discord is a way that allows you to exclusively have conversations with your with your supporters in a way that's intimate and uh, effective in from what I've seen. I've also seen it done in ways where they just kind of like build it and then abandon it. But if mm. you're actually willing to put the time in, it is very worthwhile investment from my perspective. That's awesome. 
Now let's talk money for a second because I feel like a lot of the people watching this right now, they want to know, okay, I have this idea. I want to, maybe I already have a YouTube channel or podcast or maybe I write music and I want to have an audience that supports me financially. In your opinion, what is the fastest way without bothering people, without feeling salesy, what's the fastest way to get subscribers to your Patreon that can help build longevity? Because it's not good enough to just have one month where you have a thousand people subscribe and they all abandon ship next week or next month, right? So in your opinion, what's kind of the, the route to help build that quickly? So uh, first of all, saying that it's there is a huge issue. A lot of creators are too humble or nervous to ask their audience to support them. So simply by stating it exists and putting a link in your YouTube page or uh, you know at the end of whatever you're creating, explaining like, hey, you can support me and there's a button at the end of my video and you click that button. That's, mm-hmm. that's insanely helpful first and foremost because if they don't know it's there, they're not gonna support you because they didn't know about it. So making it accessible is the first step. Uh, Second step, I would say in terms of uh, building your audience is having something of value. What does that mean to you? I I don't know, because we're talking to uh, probably more than just you and me, people who are listening all have different things that they're creating, which have a different value for them. Mm -hmm. And their audience has a perception of what's valuable, which may differ from the creator's perception of what's valuable. So interacting with your audience and finding out is helpful. So offering something valuable, uh, step two. For really quick growth, I would say something really special that's exclusive. For us, we created a 10-episode series called Artifact, um, which is this really intimate and scary, terrifying, blood-chilling story um, about someone in Oxford who is dealing with a haunted artifact. That spiked our Patreon to over 100 people, and that allowed us to do what we do and you know start to look at it as an actual successful vehicle for what we'd like. So exclusive content that is quality, and uh, that it is engaging to your audience. And that's helpful. Uh, You can also, once you have a bit of a following or you've got something that it's of value because you don't want dash and dine, people show up and then leave. You can offer things of value. So every year in October, if you join our Patreon, we offer you a patch, a limited edition patch. Uh, You know, like our our things about going outside and and hiking and and getting murdered in the Arctic. So we have these little (laughs) cool... Uh, patches that say travel not advised or you know outpost freestead 2018 2019 2020 and they're all a little bit different and unique and we don't sell them anywhere and if you're a patron on the day of billing when we bill you um for for that month you get this really cool exclusive patch that we will mail to you for no charge whatsoever and uh we we personally do it it takes up i i want to say probably 15 hours of work between the two of us writing handwriting each envelope out and, and getting it done but it is extremely valuable in allowing us to grow our audience. And it, it is a catalyst that can be up to 20% growth in a single month, wow. which is huge. And if you have value there, they'll stay. Hmm. Well, that, that's a good segue into the next question here. What are some valuable rewards that you have used or you've seen other creators use that have not only been super valuable for your audience, but if there's any way of you being able to track through analytics, it's led to people staying not just one month, but two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Are there any rewards that come to mind? Uh, I can tell you immediately again, bloopers, no one cares. Uh, Shout outs on Twitter. People kind of care, but not really. Uh, The things that people really want and really care about are access to you. So let's say you're doing consulting and you're, you know, you have an hour long conversation with just patrons once a month. That's a cool thing. You can have like a, a a chat room or even I've seen some podcasters do a whole bonus episode once a month, patron exclusive. uh, And some of them don't have it exclusive. So the people who aren't on the in can hear what's happening. And it's this cool, like the patrons are on this call. They're talking about things. They're having a good time. It's like a family fireside chat for the people keeping the lights on. And that's been really successful. For us, it's all about content. So we do exclusive stories and the exclusive stories are, uh, they have to be great quality. They've got to be just as good as the regular stuff, if not better to pull people in to, to stay with us. Um, but it, exclusive stories are good or exclusive content in terms of music or art. I haven't really, I don't know about the art side so well, so I'm not going to talk about that at all, but, um, exclusive videos, uh, things of that nature. Behind the scenes, people either really like it or they really don't. Uh, One person uh, who I really respect who has a very successful Patreon said it like this. If you think of your Patreon as the behind the scenes features on a DVD for like Lord of the Rings or something, Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's the sort of stuff people actually care about. They're they're not interested in your outtakes, but they, they want to know how you make what you make. They want to see it. They want to feel it. They want to understand it a little bit better. Or they're there for access to you, or they're there for education. And those are kind of your your different channels of of getting people involved in what you're making. Well, that is fantastic advice. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much, Perfect. Travis. Um, I'm excited to send anyone that's willing over to your Patreon channel. So where can people find you online? Pa- people can find us at patreon.com slash liberty podcast. And I would also like to just shout out one other tool for people. It's called Graph Trion, G-R-A-P-H-T-R-E-O-N. You can use that to look at other Patreons and kind of get a gauge of what is success and, and what is not success. And it gives you some really great qualifiers of information. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Travis. I know I'm excited to uh, continue supporting you with with your projects as you continue supporting mine. And uh, I love to continue working with you. And I'm excited to share this uh, with everybody. Likewise. And thanks, Stephen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, man. Thanks for watching, guys. If this video was valuable for you, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this every Wednesday. I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon patrons right here on the screen. I'm so thankful for you guys and how you support me to help cover my monthly cost for my YouTube videos here. If you'd like to become one of my patrons on Patreon, go to stevemalin.com slash Patreon and we can work together on a one-on-one basis where you can ask for music feedback and ask me all your top music business questions. Until next week, check out my Everyday Composer Chat playlist and I'll see you then.